Have you ever thought that Spain will be the first European country to decline morally faster than the rest? Faster than France, faster than the United Kingdom, faster even than the Netherlands where weed is legal. Stay with me if you want to know more about how communist and socialist parties are destroying Cervantes' country. I have listed 10 actions and laws that I bet you will not believe. I will pay you 1000 euros if at the end of this video you won't be shocked. In Catalonia, one of the most liberal Spanish regions, there is sex education with explicit books for four years old children in order to teach them what the genital are, how to have sex and how to touch themselves, in other words, to masturbate. In some regions of Spain, there are the so-called sensations workshops to make children explore sexual sensations. And here are some news I found on the internet and translated for you, warning parents about the education of their children. Do you know the Coeducat program for child sexualization? The Generalitat of Catalonia has already implemented the Coeducat child sexualization program in 1000 schools in Catalonia. In it, the Generalitat promotes masturbation among three-year-old children, the consummation of pornography among eight-year-old children, oral sex among 12-year-old teenagers. Among the topics found in the sex education workshops, we can also find Will I have an orgasm the first time? What does it mean to be a trans person? Why does oral sex give us so much pleasure? Sexism and racism. Bisexuality and pansexuality. What if I lay down with the same sex person? What is feminism? Does abortion hurt? Are you willing to masturbate? Absolutely gross and disgusting. Of course, first they teach kids what is sex and how to practice it and then they give them the right to do so with whomever they want. I repeat, whomever they want. In one of her speeches, the communist minister Irene Montero assured that sexual education is a right of boys and girls regardless of who their families are because all boys and girls in this country have the right to knowing their own body, knowing that no adult can touch their body if they don't want to and that is a form of violence. They have the right to know that they can love or have sexual relations with whomever they want based on consent. And those are recognized rights. If you realize we have gone from women's sexual liberation to children's sexual liberation. And just like you, I am speechless. This is insane. So, Spanish girls have learned what is sex and how to practice it. Then they learn that they have the right to have sex with whomever they want. And then, if they get pregnant, what's next? Abortion, of course! 16 years old girls can have an abortion for free without their parents' consent until the 14th week of pregnancy. So, we don't speak about an embryo anymore, but about a fetus. Because when the embryo reaches week 8, it is called a fetus. Basically, to get a driving license or to play the lottery, not the casino, okay, but the lottery, you must be 18 years old. However, for mutilating your body, you are mature enough at 16. Also, you have to pay to have eyeglasses or to do an operation in order not to need glasses anymore, but to kill your baby, that's for free. When I say free, I say paid with citizen taxes, that's obvious. Doesn't matter if you, a random citizen, agree or not with this practice, you will surely pay that other mothers may kill their babies. What if the girl also dies during the surgery? Because there is a risk, eh? What if she gets a post-abortion trauma? Do you think those dirty socialists and communists will care? Nope, that's not their problem. Here are the laws with regard to transsexuality, one of the points that has generated the most controversy. Teenagers from the age of 14 can now change their sex in their ID card without the need of a medical report or a hormonal treatment. 
teenagers from the age of 16 can do all that even without parental consent. The only requirement to change the sex is the will. The process will last a maximum of four months. When the trans law comes into force, transsexuality will no longer be considered a disease and trans people will be able to change their legal sex in the civil registry and the ID card without undergoing two years of hormonal therapy or needing a diagnosis of gender dysphoria as it happened until now. And it gets worse because the practice of aversion, conversion and counter conditioning methods, programs and therapies in any form aimed at modifying the sexual orientation or identity or gender expression of people is prohibited even if they have the consent of the persons concerned or of their legal representatives. So what I understand from this sentence is that if a boy thinks uh, he is a girl, he does not have the right and freedom to go to the doctor and confirm whether or not he suffers from a disorder of sex development, also known as DSD, and treat the DSD through therapy of reconciliation with the biological sex. The one and only option he has is to officially declare himself a girl, whether or not he has a DSD. And if the person goes to therapy, he or she can get a fine up to 150,000 euros. Crazy, eh? This law shows very clear what Charlotte Goyard, the first Spanish person who changed the sex, mentioned in her book, The Original Henry Benjamin Syndrome. She said that one thing is to have the Henry Benjamin syndrome, which means that a doctor declares when the person suffers from disorder of sex development. And another different one is to be declared transsexual or transgender by the LGBT lobby. Briefly, the disorder of sex development is a medical condition, while transsexuality is simply gender ideology. If you think what the left is doing is to underestimate the role of doctors and if things continue in this direction then why would people feel the need to study medicine enough to ask the lgbt lobby what disease you have am i right the law of only yes is yes is a law that was created by the Ministry of Equality, an invented ministry in Spain whose aim is to punish men and accuse them of any sort of sexual crimes, even of those that they didn't commit. If a woman makes a legal claim against her partner or against an unknown man, accusing him of sexual harassment, the man will automatically be detained without any type of proof until the contrary is proven. The reform of the law of only yes is yes puts consent at the center and not violence. In other words, violence and intimidation are no longer the most important element, but just an extra. Now, do you know what compliments on the street are? Well, in Spain, many Latin American men do that, and I am telling you this from my own experience. I still remember the day when an unknown man told me close to the subway, you are an angel fallen from heaven. Maybe in their countries, which are quite sexist, as far as I heard, maybe there this is a way to show a woman that she is beautiful. Well, now these actions are considered occasional harassment, a crime that will imply penalties of permanent location, job community or fines for the aggressors. Let's go back to the victims. With the new law, victims of sexual violence who earn less than the minimum wage will now receive financial aid equivalent to six months of unemployment benefits and the amount may be higher if the victim has a disability or kids. That sounds very good indeed, because don't get me wrong, I am the first person to call for condemnation of sex offenders and to support the victims. But what if is not true? What if the woman lies? Considering that now in Spain women are not obliged to show a medical report to prove that they have been aggressed, not to say that there are ways to fake a report, I think we all agree that any crazy woman can declare herself a victim, correct? I have spoken to some Spanish uh, single male friends about this law and they are really afraid uh, to even talk to girls because you never know how she may interpret uh, a simple compliment. 
It's not funny at all what is happening, but I cannot avoid making this joke. Basically, now the very first thing that a man should do before hooking up with a woman, mostly with an unknown woman, is to get a written and signed paper affirming that she consents to have sex, just in case. And because of stupid and unfair laws like this one, many men will ruin their lives. You will see. Spain is definitely the very last country in this world where I would have a boy, I swear. Now it gets even funnier. So we have said before that now every person can easily change the name and sex legally without a medical report showing that the person suffers from gender dysphoria and without uh, having to get hormonal treatment and do surgeries before. We have also said that a man will be automatically arrested if a woman accuses him of sexual harassment or other type of violence without medical report and any sort of proof. Okay, so what happens if a man really assaults a lady but he changes his sex to become a woman afterwards? According to Spanish newspapers, men who change their sex do not evade sentences for sexist violence since the legal obligations that any person had before rectifying their sex will be maintained. Legal obligation that any person had before rectifying their sex will be maintained. Okay, cool. That's totally fair. But what happens if a man first changes his sex and name in his ID card and then he attacks a woman? Because the text leaves room for free interpretation, do you agree? And what I understand is that it will happen exactly as in the sportive competitions where the so-called trans women, who are biological men, beat women thanks to their force. I mean, it doesn't matter if a man changes his sex and name legally, his body will always be the body of a male person, right? And the body of a male person is different from a female's body. Therefore, the harm will be equally produced, if you know what I mean. In other words, for the justice, we won't talk about uh, sexist violence done by a man against a woman anymore, but about the violence done by a woman against another woman. And of course, the penalty will not be the same. That's it. Nothing wrong with that. I have described the most disgusting and unfair actions and laws concerning children, women and transsexuals. Now let's speak about animals. There is a new law that you won't believe your ears. There is the so-called animal welfare law which says that if, for example, a rat or a snake gets into your house and you kill it, you can be sentenced to up to 18 months in jail. Imagine this law in France. There wouldn't be enough space in the prison for all the rat killers. Following the new rules of the animal welfare law, among the common pets that would be forbidden to have at home, we might encounter hamsters, rabbits, mice, spiders, tartars, parrots, iguanas, snakes and others. But what happens if people have any of these animals? In the case that the pets have been with them since before the approval of the law, there should be no problem. This as long as the animals are already registered and vaccinated and in case the final approval of the law does not say otherwise. Of course, the owners must prevent the animals in question from reproducing. This law forbids the breeding of animals unless the owners are registered as pet breeders. There is an imposition of fines from 500 to 10,000 euros to the owner of a dog that gets pregnant. Heavy, eh? On the other hand, if people incorporate any of these animals into the family after the implementation of the law, the fines can be very high. Since it could be considered a minor infraction, it would be punished with a penalty between 600 and 30,000 euros. The exact amount will depend on several factors, including whether or not the animal is hurt, as if most of the people have animals at home to mistreat them. 
Anyway. All the laws and situations I have told you about are shocking, but this one is a bomb. It's something that I have been professing for some months now, and some people might have thought that it's just a conspiracy. Well, believe it or not, zoophilia and bestiality that until now were considered a criminal offense seems to be permitted in Spain. Just for the records, zoophilia means the sexual attraction to animals and bestiality means the act of sexual contact with an animal. Article 337 of the Spanish Penal Code, still in force today, considers that bestiality is a form of abuse, but this classification disappears with the new law, which only considers that there is a crime when the act of bestiality causes injury to the animal. In other words, degenerate people are now allowed to have sex with their pets under the condition of not harming the animal. The controversial animal welfare law promoted by the far-left party called Podemos would introduce changes in the Spanish penal code. Although on one hand it establishes sentences of up to 18 months in prison for killing or mistreating vertebrate animals, on the other hand it would decriminalize bestiality. On March 19th, the day when the Catholic Church commemorates Saint Joseph, the husband of Holy Mary, Spanish people take advantage to celebrate Father's Day. For that, activities for parents and children are organized in schools on this special day. However, a teacher from a school in the city of Jerez de la Frontera sent a message with a special request through WhatsApp that went viral. In the audio, she asked for the abolition of Father's Day so that the Day of the Special Person can be celebrated instead. Here's the message that she sent. Good afternoon, parents. Look, it was to say that the 19th, which is a Sunday, is Father's Day. As you well know, it is no longer celebrated because there are many types of families. Single parents, there are others that have two mothers or two fathers. So what we are going to celebrate is the day of the special person. Let's see if you can bring a photo of the family or for example of cousin Jaime, who is the cousin with whom the child has the most fun, or with the grandparents or with the whole family or the dad, mom and the siblings. It can be wherever you want, but it's not called Father's Day anymore. This idea is applied only for Father's Day, while Mother's Day is untouchable. Just like that, because a stupid and most probably feminist pro-LGBT teacher decided. Do not be surprised if this idea will be imposed by liberals in the future. For reasons like these ones that I have just listed, I will never and ever be a communist or progressist or belong to any left-wing party. I am a very proud conservative woman and you can pay me or even kill me because I won't change my values for this garbage. That's what globalism is. Garbage. Globalists want all of us to be equal. Equally poor and equally stupid. You may believe that the bad intentions that are hidden behind the 2030 agenda is a conspiracy theory. Fine, it's your decision, but actions speak for themselves. And I am sure you wouldn't have expected pedophilia and zoophilia to be normalized, and yet it has happened in one first world European country. And there are many more things that are going to change in Spain if communist and socialist continue governing, like for example, the prohibition of meat consumption. That's not me who says that, but Spanish people who know more than anyone what is happening in their countries and who these evil people without higher education are. I pray to God for Spain because uh, the current situation is a shame. In May of this year there will be general elections and I hope that Spanish people will have the courage of Italians to vote for the only right-wing party which is Vox. 
PP or the popular party, a center wing party that uneducated people place it on the right when it has nothing to do with conservatism and patriotism, has already been in power on several occasions and has only proved to be coward and traitor. Therefore, the hope for a better future in Spain has only one name and that name is Vox. In the end, I just want to thank to my brother, who is also a YouTuber, for giving me the idea to talk about these issues. In the description box, you may find the links to his channels. I also want to thank to my Spanish friends, Jose and Alejandro, for answering all my questions regarding the new laws and things happening in their country and for providing the sources that I have also put in the description box so you may check the information by yourself.